Now, let me give you uh, one randomly chosen example, um, and it won't surprise you what it is, the public plan, right? The public plan was an essential element, if ignored element, of President Obama's campaign blueprint. It was actually in all of the Democratic candidates' health plans. Uh, and it was there uh, for a couple reasons. One, uh, the political reason is that it was a way of speaking to those on the left who believe that uh, we need to have a substantial alternative to private health insurance, uh, particularly for-profit insurance. And second, it was there because it was a means as well of explaining in clear and simple terms how affordable coverage could be made available to people in a system that would continue to be principally reliant on employment-based health insurance. After all, it's very hard to think about how just the creation of some exchanges that would have 20 or 30 million uh, customers, people who don't have coverage today or who are working uh, for very small employers, would somehow tr magically transform our system to uh, make the private insurers that have doubled premiums over the last 10 years, raising them four times faster than wage, to suddenly become cost-conscious uh, and efficient actors helping to bring down uh, the runaway costs of medical care. And indeed, I think that it's worth noting that the, the public plan also has come to solve another uh, problem, both political and a policy problem, for the administration as it has moved towards embracing the individual mandate. Because I think there is a great deal of worry out there, not just on the left, about the idea of requiring that people get health insurance from these private insurance companies without them facing some substantial competition from a public-spirited competitor for the business of those who uh, are now required to have coverage, the millions who will be brought uh, into the market for the first time. Um, the, third, the third lesson that I uh, mentioned in this piece was change politics versus more of the same. And what did I mean by that? I mean that there has been uh, a nostalgia uh, and there certainly was during the Clinton administration uh, effort in the early 1990s for that bipartisan politics that produced the Ta Tax Reform Act of 1986, uh, the Greenspan-led rescue of Social Security in the early 1980s. Um, those smoke-filled rooms where uh, men and men, uh, all rep uh, Republican and Democrat, got together to work out their differences, in a, in a world where all politics was local, as Tip O'Neill famously put it. Well, that world's dead. It's gone. We live in a hyper-polarized political climate. Uh, Dick Armey summed up the new maximum of our age by saying, not all politics is local, but you never offend your base. And now Republicans, as we've seen, are busy trying to cater to that base. If you look at the numbers, the, the Republican Party has gotten very conservative over the last generation. Uh, it's not, you don't even have to look at the numbers, you can look at your TV set. Um, and it's moved to the right in, 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 for different reasons than the Democratic Party has moved to the left. The Democratic movie Party has moved to the left mostly because of the loss of its conservative uh, Southern Democratic contingent. And in fact, if you look at ideological issue scores, the Northern uh, Democrats are basically where they were 20 or 30 years ago. Um, but on the right, uh, each generation of Republicans that has replaced the next has been quite a bit more conservative according to these scores. Now, I think that's going to change because of shifts that are occurring in American politics today, but we are living right now in, a, in an environment where reaching across the aisle is a way of getting your arm chopped off. Um, now, this may sound, this all may sound uh, pessimistic, so I want to I end actually, I think, on, on a hopeful on a hopeful note. Uh, and on a hopeful note with regard to uh, not just the overall effort, but the fate of the public plan. And I, and I, think, I think that the one uh, sort of uh, thing that gives me heart is that at every stage when it looks like the public plan has been on the rocks, uh, it's been rescued. Uh, it's come back because, as I said, it is essential for two simple reasons. One, it's an essential guarantee uh, for Americans that they will, in a reformed insurance environment, have a real choice to the, to, the, to the kinds of private insurance plans that have helped get us into our present mess. And second, it actually delivers substantial savings. The Congressional Budget Office is keep, it's a moving target on these numbers, but just came out with new scoring on the House bill that says that the House legislation with a Medicare-like public plan that's tied in part to, uh, tied to Medicare rates and has a
a provider network that builds on Medicare's but allows doctors to opt out, that that plan would save about $85 billion uh, over 10 years, which is not uh, trivial money. Rather than trying to treat it as some kind of litmus test of a, of a, of a loony left, why not just treat it as something, as the President has said, that's, that's crucial to keeping insurance companies honest? If it can pass, it will, and if it can't, we'll know that soon enough. And so it is time to step back, I think, for all of us and decide what is the ultimate goals uh, in reform. It is not a public plan in itself. It is affordable quality health care for all Americans. I don't believe that that is something that uh, is hard to define at a certain basic level. I think we know what that means. And so let us hope that that's the outcome of this debate.